Villages. Uh, I'm Kate from What Kate Made. Welcome along to my session this morning. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to upcycle clothing into new materials to use in your craft. So there's several things I'm going to show you today. Um, I've got some items of clothing here. You're a bit further away than you normally are because I'm uh, trying to get you all in, get everything in. There's going to be a big work surface today. So if you can't hear me or anything, just shout up. Right, so what I've got, I've got a pair of, these are pyjama bottoms, but these are really nice, soft, uh, fleecy plaid fabric. Can you see that? Lighting's a bit weird today because it's cold, it's dark outside. So they're like a plaid fabric, really soft. I've also got t-shirts. And now t-shirts, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna show you when I cut this one, this is just an old vest. What I'm gonna show you when I cut this one up is how, how to make t-shirt yarn. Um, if you're a knitter or a sewer, it's quite a um, an in thing to make a nice chunky yarn. Very stretchy. Um, the stretchier the t-shirt material, the better it works for t-shirt yarn. But I'll show you how to cut that to get a continuous uh, piece of yarn. I've also got a um, another t-shirt. I normally would show you a shirt, but I didn't have one that was really any good this time. So um, I've got a t-shirt there. So it's just how to cut it up to get the maximum use out of the fabric. And the final thing I'm going to show you is something a bit fancier. So this, this is a lace top. There's lots of potential here. There's lots of lacy fabric. There's this lovely, um, I don't know if you can see that, sort of silvery stitched neckline. Um, there's um, a belt, tie belt. So that's giving you a good, good pieces of lace to use up. Um, it's got a fringe, so again, we've got lots and lots of bits there to take apart. So if you're there and out there, I've got your responses up, I can see what you're saying. So um, give me a wave and a shout. Jill's already said hello. Hello, Jill. Uh, let me know who's joining us this morning. Um, what will you will need? Obviously, you need a pair of scissors. These are my, my fabric scissors, which actually do a sharp, and, um, they are, but they are very sharp. Don't use them for anything else. I've also got a very... Can you see? You're so far away today. A pair of small pointy scissors. There again, are very sharp. They're good for getting into seams and picking out. And I do have a seam ripper as well. Um, I don't use them very often. I'm not very good with them, to be honest. What else have I got here? I've got a few bits and pieces. And once I've shown you how to take things apart, I'm going to make. Um, I haven't got any jeans to show you, but jeans are really good for all sorts of things. I'm going to make a little um, rosette-shaped brooch, sort of a flower brooch. Just to show you what you can do with your materials. So what I've got, what's good to recycle? One thing that's really good to recycle is buttons. I have stacks and stacks of reclaimed buttons. All in little jars, different colours. Those are metal ones. I've had them down because I want to use a metal button on my, the brooch I'm going to show you. Um, as you can see, some of this is, I've still got labels on, this t-shirt. Charity shops are a great source of fabric. Um, everything else in here is, is stuff I've worn and no longer wear uh, so rather than giving it to charity if it's if it's good fabric I will recycle it all this I have bought and um, I'm currently making um, things for my dog toys and little coats he likes a little coat on well I don't know whether he does but I like him in it um, so jeans you get a lot of bits of jeans because jeans have got lots of different parts so I'll just show you a few examples of what you can do with a pair of jeans. This is um, a dog I made. They make excellent toys. Denim fabric makes excellent toys. Um, you can see where the seam is still. Can you see that? The seam is still down the middle of the dog from the middle of the jeans. And I've used two different colours of um, denim fabric. So that's a lighter stone washed one. And I love him. He's my favourite dog. Um, another good idea with jeans or trousers of any kind really, you can take the legs out. Now this is the lower half of the leg. Uh, it makes a great um, door stop or, you know, weighted thing for holding doors open. You, very simple to do. You just turn it inside out and run the seam along the bottom. Fill it with sand or something heavy. I quite often use rice and then just put a ribbon around it. You've already got a hem so you don't have to worry about that. Also, same thing, same principle, sewn along the bottom makes a great bottle bag uh, as a gift bag. Just I would just tie a ribbon around it. So jeans are great. 
So the pockets on jeans, I've got a few things to show you today actually. I made this some time ago. This is a, it's a storage thing um, hanging and it's got all pockets in it. So it's made up of the po back pockets of jeans um, and that hangs on and I put bits and pieces, on it hangs on the wall. I put bits and pieces, you know, like scissors and stuff in it. Right, oh, Joyce Bates from Blackpool. Hi, Joyce, I'm just down the road from you in Ellswick. Anybody else there? Helen, hi, Helen. Yeah, keep sending in and uh, saying hello. And tell me where you are. Right, let's get on then. So I'm going to start with the vest. Um, and I'm going to show you, I hope you see, okay, it's quite a distance away from me, how to cut it to make t-shirt yarn. Now, this is... um very stretchy fabric there's a lot of lycra in it so it's ideal for this now i discovered this um the property of it that i'm going to show you that makes great t-shirt yarn in um a lockdown I, I made a lot of masks in lockdown and um i found that this sort of fabric was the best thing to make the ear loops with because it's really soft so what we're going to do we're going to turn it inside out so that they side seam is on the outside so we can see where it is and we're going to cut in a spiral and the reason we're going to cut in a spiral is because we're going to get one continuous length which is if you're making t-shirt yarn is quite vital we've got sue from scotland and ali from scotland we've got lots of people this morning mary good morning mary so to make a cut in a spiral lay out your t-shirt so that the seam there's this, you can see the seam at each end and then it's simply you start to cut at the bottom i quite often take the hem off because the hem is um is double thickness and it's a, it doesn't work as well as the single thickness so i'm going to very carefully cut the hem off this is going to be a bit of a boring session if you're only going to watch me cutting um as i say I used it in lockdown to make straps for masks because I found the elastic was very harsh on your ears. I mean, we're going back a long way now to lockdown, aren't we? So um, we need to, <laughs> it feels like a lifetime ago, but it's not that that far, is it? Hi to uh, Lindsay from Swansea. Oh, we're getting people from all the nations this morning. We just need somebody from Northern Ireland now. So I'm going to carefully keep cutting this round. Now, t-shirt yarn's really useful. If you want to do something that's a little bit sturdier, you can knit or crochet with it. I, I do a lot of crochet, so I would crochet with it. Um, you see bags particularly made of it because it's, because it's quite thick and it's got a bit of structure to it. It doesn't, um, the, the end result doesn't give as much. Right, so we're nearly there, we're getting this hem off. I should have cut it off before I started. Hello to Janet in St. Anne's, eh? We've got lots of locals watching, that's nice. Right, so that's got rid of the hem. So, we're now gonna cut in a spiral. And in order to do that, we want to cut it, um, you don't want to cut through two, two layers of thicknesses, so just, just separate it out. I'm gonna cut it up. Um, from the seam that i'm gonna make my can you see i'm gonna make it that width that's about two centimeters and the reason for making it a little bit wider you'll see when i've cut a bit of it and i'm going to grab cut it slightly at an angle so that it works its way around so your first strand is always a little bit thicker because what you want to do when you get to this side is um keep it joined i just took the other bit underneath. I have a habit of cutting through two layers if I'm not careful. So I'm trying to just fold that so. So you just keep cutting along in this spiral fashion so that it's joint, you're keeping the seam in so you're not having to join the pieces after. If you cut it, you know, um, in long strips from another angle, you would have to join it. Now, you can already see, when I was saying it has properties that are really good, you can already see it forming itself into, I'm cutting through two layers again, into a little tube. And I'll show you, in, I'm not going to cut the whole t-shirt up, don't worry. 
You'll see why it makes a really good t-shirt yarn, surely. When I've got, I'm back to the seam again now, so. I haven't done it very well, to be perfectly honest, because I've cut through too many layers. But you can see, now we're back, at, we're back where we started, and I'm going to carry on so that it's... Uh, I'll just cut another bit, just so I can show you then what happens. So you, what you would do is carry on all the way around, keep going round and round and round the body. But when you've got a long strip like this, this is going to be difficult to show. I might have to stand up and come across the camera. If you give it a tug, now it works especially well with these uh, yarns with, um, with, sorry, fabrics with lycra in them. Ordinary t-shirt does this, but it does stretch a little bit along the length. So what you can see we've got now is, it's like, um, it's curled up. I don't know if you can see that. It's curled up, so now it's a stretchy yarn. And then you would just, wind it up in a ball like you would any yarn and you can work with it um it's it does have a bit of stretching when it's finished a finished fabric but the way it curls around on itself makes it really nice to work with it's very soft um not at all scratchy uh so you and you have got a nice sort of yeah yarn you can do it i mean you see this done with plastic bags with all sorts of things with um uh, other fabrics as well but the stretch in this makes it particularly nice to work with so as you can see out of one t-shirt you would get a decent amount of yarn you don't get a massive amount but i have a lot i wear a lot of vests like this and um, black white and cream and i you know they always wear out eventually so never throw a vest away nothing ever gets thrown away in my house it's, we are a bit like um i don't know what the word is with scavengers pack rats everything goes from being one sort of to go out into every day to gardening clothes to rags for all sorts of projects right so that was your t-shirt yarn so that's quite a nice thing to do um so i'm going to use the t-shirt next as an example of how to take something apart to get the maximum use out of the out of the things the parts of it um that's still got its label on from the charity shop so i'll just get rid of that so t-shirt we will start with the sleeves and I'm going to turn it inside out because what I want to do is cut as close to the seams as I can. Um, what would you use the t-shirt for? I would make a dog coat out of it, my dog. He's, I'm surprised he's not up here, he always likes to come and join in. Um, and he's very amenable to being dressed up. Never had a dog before that would wear anything other than a collar. So yeah, we do treat him like a little baby. So you want to lay out your, your t-shirt so it's really flat just to get the most out of your um your cutting. Now I'm going to use the big scissors because the seam's quite good on this and it is meeting up properly. So I can cut straight across. So I'm going to take out the sleeve as close to the seam as I can. And then we've got like a stocking. Uh, so you could use, what could you use this for? You could open it up down the seam that way. So you've got a, a nice piece of fabric, quite a decent size. Or again, things like bottle bags. Um, it's not really wide enough for a door stop. You could, um, actually, I said door stop. One good thing, oh, drops, drops to everybody. One good thing this would be good for both sleeves. If you use both sleeves, would be a draft excluder. Um, I'll cut the other sleeve out. Just make sure it's nice and flat so that when I'm cutting, I'm not wasting anything. Hate wasting anything, as you'll probably have gathered. <laughs> so I'm going to cut that that way. Okay. Now, if you join these together. I don't, can you see that? Can you see that I've got the um, the sleeve bit there that's on an angle? And then with the other, I'll just turn it back inside out so it's easier to see. The other sleeve with the angle, I can join join that together at the two angles. If you see what, if you can see that, 
and then you've got a long tube then. So if you wanted to make a doorstop, you could sew up one end, stuff it all the way along. You'd have to sew it in the middle, obviously. And then when it's finished, just tuck in the other end and sew that up as well. So that would make a half extruder. I always have loads and loads of stuff in because I um, keep little bits of fabric, little bits of yarn, um, the stuffing out of old, old cushions. You know when cushions go really flat and not very comfy? Use the inner pads, take all the stuffing out. If you give it a bit of a fluff and pull it apart, it makes great stuffing. So that's that's one use for the sleeves on that. But the other the other thing you could do is open them up um, down the side seam, which I'll do that now. I actually, when I do this, I try to cut the seam off because the, we won't really use the seams, but I quite often like to leave the hem at the bottom of the sleeve. It's useful to not have to do a hem. So if we cut this up the side, we can open it out and have a bigger bit of fabric, just nice and carefully. I do need to get these scissors sharp. They have got a blunt spot in them now. It's difficult to find somebody to sharpen scissors these days. They don't seem to be those you know, little sort of repair shops and things that you used to get. So you can see now you've got a much bigger piece of fabric. Um, and that is pretty. And that I think was, I don't know, £1.50 at the charity shop. So with the bodies, so that's the sleeves of your um, T-shirt. With the body, which we've now got like a sleeveless, yeah, body, I'm going to flatten it out and i'm going to take out the shoulder the um the seam where the shoulder seam that's what it's called isn't it i want to cut out as many of the seams as i can because they just make it difficult to work with um i'm just gonna separate that out and cut it off there we go that's that one this is giving us quite a nice large piece of t-shirt fabric to work with. Uh, what can you use it for? You could use it for, it makes a nice line into a bag if you're making a bag, that's particularly with a contrasting pattern, you know, um, anything where you just need a jersey fabric. So I'm cutting out the shoulder seams, and then I'm going to cut out the side seam one side seam I'm not going to cut both now just because I want to show you how big a piece of fabric it actually is when you've cut the seams out make a cushion with it make a nice cushion nice and soft and all the way through the hem again we're leaving the hem on the bottom because that's a handy hem it's not a hem you won't have to do again just need to cut that through that shoulder seam to the neck and again I'm going to leave the neck piece in place cut the wrong side <laughs> because again it's a handy seam if you want to when I'm making little coats for my little dog I would I would what I would do then would be to um join it there and that gives a handy neck hole. So the seams, really nice cut uh, seams are, are good to leave in. Uh, hems, sorry, um, but seams not. So look at the length of that piece of fabric. And I know the top bit is a little bit, um, and all that, plus your sleeves, that is a lot of fabric to work away at. You could very easily make a beautiful cushion, leaving that seam in place, I'm just cutting it along the armhole there. Um, if you that would make a nice bag as well if you lined it with a with a a non stretchy fabric. You've just got to be careful with bags with stretchy material because they just get big when you put something in them. So that is really nice. So that's a really useful way of um, using up an old t-shirt. So it particularly if you've got a very favourite t-shirt you know a pattern you love and you know you wear it and then you spill 
I don't know, bolognese sauce on it, and that's it, it's ruined forever. Um, you can reuse that fabric into making yourself something that really nice without using the stain. Lovely. So, so that's t-shirt fabric. Again, you could use it to make the t-shirt yarn. Um, it's not as, because it's not got as much lycra in it, it's not as, it doesn't curl as much. And it does tend to be, I'll just give this a little bit of a tug. It's, it doesn't curl the same, so it's not quite as good. You would only get, you would get it as a flat ribbon rather than as a, a curled up ribbon. So what should we move on to next? Shall we try this pair of pyjama bottoms? Um, trousers, lots and lots of fabric in trousers. Um, it's a shame I haven't got a pair of jeans to show you because jeans are great. Um, I have got a video that I've used in the past of how to, how to take apart a pair of jeans. So I'll pop that up onto my um, my own Facebook page, What Kate Made. I'm sure they'll pop the link up for you. Um, still got quite a few people joining in. Uh, Pippa Thomas. As said, it, she missed the start, so she's interested in um, what we're doing and what we're going to make. Um, Lindsay and Abigail, hello to you too. Right, so back to our um, pair of trousers. So the first thing I'm going to do is it's got a drawstring. I think it's a fake drawstring. I'm just, yeah, it doesn't pull. But you can just, through the hem, I'm going to, just cut the waistband. I'm going to cut where where the drawstring goes through. These are my little pointy scissors, which aren't working very well. I'm going to cut through that just to see if I can release that drawstring all in one. Because it would make a handy time. I'm resorting to the thick scissors now. The, the big scissors. I think it's because there's a seam there. I think that's why it's difficult. Let me turn it over the other way. And I think it's sewn in. I would just sort of pick away at it until it comes loose. These things are quite often just sewn in with a line of stitching. I hate wasting anything. Um, just trying to figure out how it is. Happened in. I think it's there we go. We just would keep nipping away at the stitching until it comes out. Now there is also a nice piece of elastic in there, in that waistband, but I suspect it's sewn right in, it is. So it's sewn into that seam, the elastic, but I will get it out later. So what I'm gonna do now is take the waistband off. I'll turn them inside out again. It just makes it easy to see where the seams are. I hope you this is you finding this fascinating. You are watching me do a lot of cutting. I am going to show you something, how to make something later. Looking at the time, don't want to leave it too late. So I'll cut this waistband off. Now, what would you use this for? This is really nice soft fabric. This would make a lovely um it's like a almost like a flick like a fleece and um, it would make a really nice neck warmer and that would be dead easy to make as well because of the fabric it is it doesn't it isn't going to fray this um so you could you don't need to sew it doesn't have a lot of stretch in it either though so if you're going to make a neck warmer you need to make sure it's big enough to go over your head because it won't stretch um Once I've got the waistband off, you'll be able to see how much fabric, just how much fabric we do have. Another thing, it's nice because it's like a flannel. Um, I make a lot of little uh, hand warmers, foot warmers, basically a bag with rice in it. So you put your rice in an inner bag and then sew it into an outer fancy bag and you can warm it in the microwave. Now, these are brilliant. I, I suffer from quite a bad shoulder and I have it on my neck when it's hot. And I use it in the bed at night if it's cold, if the heat is cold, instead of a hot water bottle. I'm always worried hot water bottles will burst. Anyway, back to the neck warmer. Now, I'm just going to demonstrate. I would make the neck warmer out of part of the leg. 
the bottom of the leg is not going to go over my head. Oh, it might do. Just all right. Let's do that then, because I've got quite a big head. So I'm going to use a double. I want a double thickness. So my neck warmer, I want it to fold over on itself. So I've got a double thickness. So if I think that I want it to be about that deep, so there, I will fold that up and think, right, well, that's a double thickness. So I'm going to just cut straight across there. Just wind that out of the way. It's easy cutting plaid because you've got lines to follow. I always like a bit of easing. My cutting's not the best. Okay, so we've taken that off and we already tried it over our head before we cut it, or I have over my head. So um, let me think. If you put it on inside out, like this, Pull it over your head and then pull that bit down. How's that? That is really cosy. Now my husband would love this. In fact, he's having this um, because it's, an, it's a nice masculine um, fabric. There's no sewing involved there, just a bit of cutting. Secondhand fabric, so it's not going into landfill. It ticks all the boxes. You could even you could even sew a seam around that look that edge if you wanted to tidy it up a little bit. So oh my hair's a mess now. So simple, easy, gift, um, warm, everything. Very easy. Okay. Uh, time's running a bit short. I'm just going to show you a few quickies. In fact, I will sh show you the demonstration of the um, the little brooch I'm going to make before we go off just because um i don't want i want you to see this rather than just me cutting so i'm using denim uh, i've cut a couple of strips of denim this is recycled from jeans um they're both from the same uh, piece of fabric but as you can see one side i'll hold them up side by side it's darker um on the right side than the wrong side so we're getting a double i don't we're going to use a double layer uh, so you'll get a bit of a contrast. So what I'm going to do is make two little rosettes. Just bear with me because I'm going to get some pink in cheese. So this is denim with stretch in it. It doesn't fray very well. So if you wanted to fray it, you know, you'd be struggling. But I'm going to use the pink in cheese with the zigzag edge just to give it a bit of um a bit more pattern if you like i'm going to do the outer one i've got two strips my two strips two different lengths so the inner uh, i'm going to use this for the inner rosette and this for the outer rosette because that's longer and you want it slightly bigger i've got one straight edge and one ragged edge i'm going to leave the straight edge and i'm going to cut about an inch in with my pink in shears i'm basically cutting this strip in half because it's a couple of inches wide i just cut it off the leg of um of some jeans old jeans that i had right so when you're cutting it in half like that you're gonna have enough for two so that let me bring it a bit closer can you see I've got a nice zigzag edge on that? When I get this close, I can't see, you know. So that's the, um, I'm gonna use the paler side of that. That's my middle rosette. This is my piece for the outer rosette and I'm just gonna do the same again. I've got a nice straight edge on that one edge. I'm gonna make it a little bit wider, so a couple of inches wide. And I'm just gonna zigzag it again to give myself a nice decorative edge. Now you will need a needle and thread for this. You will also need a decorative button for the middle and a brooch back or a safety pin. Okay, so there's my second piece. And you simply take a needle and thread and you gather it along, not the, not the zigzagged edge, the, the other edge, which is gonna be the middle of your, flat, of your rosette. So I've just threaded that needle already and I'm just going to run a gathering stitch about half a centimetre from the um, bottom edge. doesn't have to be neat, you just want to 
make loose gathers enough so that it, it, it curls round on itself into a little rosette. Another thing the denim's really useful for, I said before about toys and I showed you the dog I've made. Dog toys, because it's quite tough. I mean, this dog I've got now, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't really chew things. But my previous dog was a chewer and, and it would rip any toy apart. So den denim was really good. So what I'm gonna do is just gently gather that so that um, the two sides meet together. And then I'm gonna run a little seam up can you see I'm going to join them together slightly with a little just with a little overhand stitch um whip stitch I don't know what you call it just so that it stays together in a loose um sort of rosette shape and then just um fasten it off with a knot Put that to one side and use that on the other piece as well. So you can see I've got a rosette. So that's my outer rosette. Then with the other one, I'm going to make use the lighter blue side for it. So I've got a contrast and I'm going to do just the same. Run a gather. along it now you can wear it as a brooch you can put it on a bag on a hat a nice on bag um if you had a longer strip you could make tighter gathers um i just cut a strip off one leg of a pair of jeans and then cut it in half so you you know it's not an exact science um, you can make a more. Again, we're just going to have to make sure I do it the right way this time, so that we we want the the lighter colour on the outside. So I'm just making the ends meet and gonna stitch it up again. Just want to make sure my gathers don't unravel, so I'll put one little holding stitch in there and then sew it up like a little seam. You can do this much neater if you want. I'm just doing it because I want to I want to get to show you something to make rather than just cutting up stuff. So I'm not going to um snap my thread because I need to um use it to sew the button on and the, if I've got enough thread the backing. Okay. So I'll unfold that and you can see I've got another rosette, slightly smaller than that one. So that will sit inside like that. So the next stage, I don't know whether I've got enough cotton left. Um, I might, I'm going to re-thread my needle because I don't think I'll have enough to finish it on that. It's painful watching me thread needles these days. I, my eyesight's so bad, even with my glasses on. Uh, get some thread. I always like to double my thread just to give it a bit of extra strength and if you double it and feed it through and then double it up and knot it at the end you also have a nice handy little loop to give an anchor to your thread rather than just doing a big knot and hoping it doesn't come all the way through. Right so we place our two uh, rosettes together. You can glue at this point, you don't have to sew. And I'm going to just um, put through a, a few little stitches just to hold them together. I'm going to go up from the bottom and back down. And then when I made my knot, I'm just going to hook the, the needle through so that it provides an anchor point. And then I'll just do another couple of stitches like that. It, it holds them together. It also helps keep your gathers in place. 
get the needle through through three three thicknesses of denim can be quite difficult. Okay, that's just going to hold them together. As I say, you don't even have to sew, you could use glue. Um, I'm not so sure how glue would hold your brooch back on, but um, okay, so that's got our two rosettes held together nicely. Can you see? Now, the button I've chosen is a nice metallic one, came off a coat. You can see, I don't know if you can see that. Um, but it's gonna provide a really nice contrast. So I'm gonna come up the middle, thread on my button. Mine's got a shank on, it's not got um, uh, button holes. And then you just basically sew it on like you would sew it onto a coat. So through your fabric a couple of times, back up and through the shank. Don't pull it too tight until you've done a few stitches because you'll find that um, the shank is underneath and it disappears if you pull it too tight you can't you then can't um get your needle through it <laughs> so that's that's nice and secure it doesn't have to be you're not going to be using it it's just decorative so it doesn't have to be too um too secure uh, just as long as it'll hold on you're not it's not like you're going to be putting it in and out of a buttonhole so i'm just going to make a couple of stitches to anchor that nice and tightly now what you could do at this point if you wanted to tidy up the back a little bit is um put a square um, a circle of denim fabric on the back as well just to hide all these uh little bits and pieces Mine's got slightly out of shape. Some of the gathers have shifted, so I'm just going to pull them in again with a stitch. Or two in the back there. But you don't have to put anything on the back. Quite often I put a circle of felt um, on the back of brooches just because felt doesn't fray again. So that's our nice flower ready made. I might just trim these ends a little bit just to bring it together a bit. Can you see the button in the center? The next thing is a brooch back. <laughs> You're so far away. It, I bought, I buy loads of these. Um, they've got three little holes in a flat plate. So that's the bit that you saw. And then they've got just a standard brooch catch on. So what I'm gonna do is sew that onto the back. And I put a couple of, I put it right across the center and a couple of little holding stitches in it through each hole just overhand um and that will be enough to hold it on just quickly then with time i'll go back and show you the lace time is it i probably haven't got time but the lace would make a really nice brooch as well Anything decorative, I do enjoy. Right, so we've got that. A couple of stitches through each of the holes. Just fasten it off with a, a knot. So in this, the only thing we've bought is the brooch, brooch back, but you could use a safety pin that you might just have hanging about. Um, Right, so you can see how I've sewn the brooch on the back. And then let's fasten, I'll fasten it on my t-shirt if I can get it on. I can't see that. <laughs> there we go. So, very nice. So we'll leave that on there. What time have we got? Right, we've got about five minutes. So I'm gonna quickly show you how I would take apart this lace dress. So along the edge of the dress, there's this sort of frill. Now, th these are much more delicate fabrics. So you probably want to use your small scissors and your seam picker and just work out where the seams run. So there is a seam along there. A lot of these seams are overlocked, which means that they're sort of like a zigzag. 
and then um, it cuts the edge off as it's going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim with the small scissors as close to that seam as I can. I need just to get it started. I don't know why these scissors are not working as well. I might need to invest in some new scissors and downgrade my sewing scissors to being uh, Sometimes you can rip it, but this isn't going to let me. I am just going to work my way along this edge piece. Right close to the seam. But again, lace won't fray, so that's not a problem. Once you get going on this, you can actually work quite quickly. When I reach the side seam, I'm going to cut it down the side seam so you can see what I've done. I'm coming up to the side seam now. So nothing's wasted when I take a piece of clothing apart. I use the reuse buttons from shirts. Um, all my buttons, nearly all my buttons have been recycled from one source or another. I reuse zips, all sorts of fastenings. Now, I haven't gone the whole length, but you can see how nice that is, that length. Now that will make, it, you know, it will make anything that you would use lace for. It would make a nice um, addition to your brooch, your brooch like this. Um, it, it would look lovely with silver, a silver button and maybe white. Um, you can use ribbons for your, for these kind of rosette brooches as well. So a nice white satiny ribbon with your, uh, the lace is quite floppy, so you'd probably have to um, uh, put it on the inside so it's got a stiffer outside to hold it. But another thing I like to do with lace, particularly when it's got a nice decorative pattern on it like this, if you wrap it round a glass jar um, or a, an old glass tumbler, it makes a lovely uh, tea light holder and you can put a little candle in it and it shines out through the lace and creates lovely patterns. Right, I'm nearly at this other seam of this, so I'm going to show you how long a piece this is. Right. Because it's been a bit gathered on the on the, the dress, you're getting quite a long, that long length of lace. And that is only the bottom couple of inches. There's another two layers of lace in this blouse. So you can see how much usable fabric you're getting out of it. The other, um, the next flounce, if you like, is a little bit uh, narrower. And the seam that I've left on it gives it a nice edge. So I would then go up to the next seam and cut, cut across that seam. And there's a hole, you know, Top. The inside, the lining of it, again, um, if you, this lining will roll, it's that sort of, sort of fabric that will roll up, so if you, you could cut that into t-shirt now. Um, so, that's me done. I hope, you, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you all go now rummaging through your drawers and your charity bags and pulling out all that stuff you were going to send to the charity shop because you can now you can make, remake it into other things. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I'm back in February. I'm not sure of the date. Um, so I'll see you then. But uh, have a nice day. It's absolutely dreadful here. So I'm going to spend the afternoon with the fire on and my crochet. Um, but thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. Because you're far away, I have to come all the way up here to switch the camera off. <laughs>